schoolers. Sometimes I get asked about developing a superpower of focus with a very young learner. I think for our youngest learners, even two minutes is a long time. I recently read an interview with a renowned meditator who was asked how long he can focus and meditate. And his response was about seven seconds. What we're after here is to raise awareness so we know where our minds are. If your little one is focusing for just a few seconds, great, start there. If they focus for a bit longer and then start to ask unrelated questions, it's fine. We might say something like, I see your mind came up with an important question to you. Let's pause our timer so I can answer it and then go ahead and answer the question and then ask something like, are you ready to start training your superpower again? And then you go ahead and start the timer again. It's all upbeat and positive. We want to build that awareness without our kids feeling wrong or inadequate. Superpower time is kid controlled. We aren't managing them. They're in the driver's seat, choosing the learning, choosing the time, choosing the experience. Maybe the superpower time is 10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever it is, celebrate it. Our minds are constantly shifting to this or to that. They're made to do that to keep us alive. It's a feature, not a flaw. We simply gently bring our minds back to where we want them to be. The key is to become aware of where our minds are at any given time. That's how we stay present. The rest is just a choice. In the book and online course, you'll learn some mindfulness practices that research has shown to build attention and focus. Even little ones can do these exercises. We do exercise to keep our bodies in shape. We can also do exercise to keep our brains in shape. Here are some additional tips to help kids become aware of their mind's focus. Building awareness of how they are learning is far more important than any little bit of content. Encourage your kids to sink into quiet moments. If they accompany you on errands, for example, around town or waiting somewhere, for example, leave the technology at home. Kids can sit quietly, look out the window, chat with you, focus on their breath or use their imagination in some way. Kids can go out into nature to sit, to climb, to relax, to explore. Raise the baseline for boredom. The easier it will be for kids to focus and the quicker they will be able to meet those learning goals. Who owns your child's mind? Do they wield control over their own mind or does it belong to the phone or the television or the video game? Can your child be content without any outside stimulation? Carve out quiet spaces for creativity, problem solving, and emotional regulation. Raise your child's awareness to sequential monotasking, one activity at a time. Switching between tasks, which I call task switching, leads to a deterioration of attention. When we focus on task A and then move to task B, a little bit of our attention is left over there on task A. We do this repeatedly and our ability to attend decreases dramatically. The quality of our work declines and our kids can't focus very well. Attention is a limited resource. Help kids learn how and when to apply it. Doing one thing at a time for an extended period, deep work, leads to a quality of mind and a quality of performance. Do one thing, finish it, and then move on to something else. Don't waste your dopamine on meaningless distractions, but instead, save it for deep learning. Happy bolt schooling!